Hey y'all, it's Brandon. And Stephanie. From Getting Gazelle. We definitely hope you had a fabulous Labor Day and spent, were able to spend time with your family. Um, so we had a three day weekend. Um, excuse the wildlife it in is a our background. <laughs> beautiful Florida day, so you're gonna hear lots of- That's a siren. Dogs being walked and um, our neighbors have some birds. We have shown you Cole and Sterling in a video our, as our new additions, but we have not shown you um, Genesis and Jinx. Jinx made an appearance in the boys' bedroom organization um, post, but Genesis has not. Um, Genesis is white and she has a big gray spot right here on her head, and she is Jinx's sister. So, um, we adopted another sibling set, and, um, the reason we ended up choosing to adopt Jinx is because he is all black, and black cats, um, have trouble finding homes, first of all. People are very superstitious about having a black cat or having a black cat in their home, um, and then another reason is that the adoption centers don't really like to adopt them out before Halloween because terrible things happen to black cats on Halloween. So sad. Um, people will like sacrifice them and, and stuff like that. We adopted Jenny and Jinx. Um, and we noticed shortly after um, that after Jinx was with us that his eye looked a little cloudy. And so I had taken him into the doctor and... Um, they said that we could use some eye medicine that we had left over from when Cole was adopted and he had an eye infection. And they said that's very normal when you adopt cats, when they change environments or they get a little bit of stress. Their immune system, their immune system takes system. a hit. And so they said it wasn't anything that, that the place we adopted them from had done. Um, and so it sounds like we live in a jungle. Um, it's, but they said it was nothing that, that we had done or the adoption um, facility had done or the foster family because both sets of our cats were actually in foster homes um, and they were only in the adoption facility the day that they were adopted. It worked out that way. So um, they said I could use the old medicine. So I did and I used it up. Well, um, then Jenny came down with what appeared to be a fungal infection. Um, and we, we had the test run for that, which kind of ticked me off afterwards because it took over two weeks to get the results back. Lesson learned. We paid for the test, um, and but in the meantime, we treated it with an antifungal. Well, so they, they had added to our bill the antifungal lotion from the doctor's office, um, and it was... $40? No, I think it was even more than that. I think it was like 60 something dollars. 40 or $60. I don't even remember. Um, and I just remember thinking, wow, that's really expensive for medicine. Well, turns out they were out of the medication. And so we asked them, well, what happens now? And they said, oh, you can use over-the-counter Lotrimin. Um, it's the same exact medication, just not formulated in a lotion. Instead, it's in a cream. And so, um, we were like, oh, okay, no problem. Well, then we got in the car and we started talking to each other and we were like, why didn't they just tell us that we could use a $10 medication instead of trying to sell us a $60 medication? Turns out we bought the Walmart brand of Lotrimin and it was less than $5. Well, and the thing was, is, is we asked them the next time, they said that if you ask them that they can tell you if there's a human medication for it, but they can't, like it's their company policy, I guess, right. that they can't just out and offer it. Right, so I was like, well that, yeah, I, I just thought that was so silly, like $55 markup for antifungal that I can buy at Walmart. So, um, when we first got Jinx, I told you he had that, um, his eye just looked cloudy to me. Um, and we took him in and they said yes, so we used up the rest of the eye medication. Well, we had to quarantine Genesis during this, when we thought it was antifungal, because um, it can pass very quickly to cats and it is contagious to humans. And so we could have very quickly all come down with this strange fungus. So, which most likely would have been ringworm. 
so um we had quarantined them well it stressed jinx out and genesis and they cried for each other um we had jenny in our bedroom the rest of the cats had free reign of the house jinx was trying to pull her Craziest the thing door. I've ever seen. It was the, it was like the most bizarre thing I've ever seen cats do. Um, but in the meantime, it stressed Jinx out. And so when we took him in for Jenny's recheck, where, where we found out that she didn't even have a fungal infection, um, and to get their shots, because they were both due for shots, um, we had them look at Jinx's eye because it started to look cloudy again. And they said that they thought he had an eye infection. Well, Brandon had gone by himself. This is the day that I had Latin boot camp, I think, and I was just spent. Um, and so I had um, told Brandon, don't forget if they tell you that they <coughs> need a medication to ask if there is any alternatives or substitutions that can be made. So he asked. Now the prescription from the vet's office was $32. No, $34. $34. $34 and some change. So he asked for the name of the medication and he asked if it came in human, um, in strength human form, yeah, or just... form or whatever. So they said yes, it did. So um, then he, they wrote down the name for him and he called. CVS. So first, I actually first I called Publix. Oh, we called Publix. He called Publix, and it was twenty nine dollars. Twenty nine dollars there. So I was like, it's a little cheaper. So we were like, okay, three dollars savings. So then I called CVS, and it was a hundred and four dollars for this same little tube of medicine. So then he called Walmart, and this tube of medicine happens to be on the Walmart $4 list. Veterinarian wrote out a prescription and we dropped it off at Walmart. We picked it up for $4. So that is twice now that we have ended up getting their medications much cheaper by getting the human formulation and asking, just just asking. Is there any difference? Is there any difference? Because obviously there... we would not you know, give anything to our pets that are gonna right. harm them or Right. Anything like that. But it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. And so it's marked on here that the, it is for patient Jinx. And then our last name, getting Gazelle. On Jinx's file, we found out that if you have an animal prescription, that their date of birth, when they ask you to verify, is always January 1st, 2001. It's 1101. Um... And so we stopped by. Um, now we have this prescription, but it was a hundred and four dollars. Either hundred and four, hundred and nine. I can't remember. Not, over a hundred dollars at CVS. Um, so that is something to think about. If you're paying cash prices for human medication, you should call and check all the time. And you should also look on this app I found called GoodRx.com. And um, it will tell you um, the different rates for the different stores. And it will also tell you like a coupon code to tell them. It's completely legit and the pharmacist knows all about it. Um, I found one this week. We had to refill the EpiPens um, twin pack because Isaiah accidentally ate a peanut. It ended up in the emergency room and then staying overnight. But... So I needed to refill my EpiPens because you should always have two EpiPens. That's why they come in twin packs. Um, and our copay for an EpiPen is $35 um, because it is name brand and it is like the top tier on our insurance. Um, but I found a coupon code using that website, GoodRx, and it paid the copay for us. So our insurance paid the whatever the full amount several hundred dollars yeah. um and then um uh, the coupon code paid for the 35 dollars, which the coupon code was actually from the manufacturer 
So um, most of the time, if you have to have a name brand medication, you can always find a coupon for that name brand medication. Right. We've done that several times now. So um, I just thought that a lot of people might not think that their veterinary medicine can really be given in human form and that it might be on the four dollars always list. always ask it it can't hurt to ask yep i and i'm one of those people that like i don't like to negotiate i don't like to ask in fact when brandon and i go to yard sales together i always go and look and then i tell brandon what i want and what price i want to pay and he goes and negotiates for me because i don't like doing it i have no shame i actually enjoy doing it and he thinks it's a mind game and so I hate asking, I hate asking for specials or for somebody to go out of their way for me. And, um, but I, I'm a believer in asking now when it comes to our vet and medicines. We love our vet, we love our vet program. They have a wellness program that we, it's already paid for itself mm -hmm. several times over. Um, and it, it includes their immunizations and things like that, but it doesn't include sick um medications or tests i think it covers their visit it covers their visit and you get 10 percent off of the medication right but if you can get it for free or for four dollars that's better than it's 10%. way better than 10 percent off so um we hope you had a good three-day weekend if you got one um if you didn't get one we're sorry you should work for a financial institution <laughs> you get lots of holidays um just kidding so, um, I'm not feeling 100%. I've been out in the heat and the humidity has gotten to me a little bit. So, um, we are going to head in and clean up and get ready for tomorrow. Got a busy day. I have a busy day tomorrow. And then Wednesday we have homeschooling group. So. Which is always a busy day because then we have church right after that. So, right. Thursday things will start to slow it down a little bit. Oh, we have to tell them about our house. So, we have an update about our house. Our house has had um, what they call a caravan where all the real estate agents from our Realtors uh, brokerage all go and look at all the houses that they have in their personal inventory. So, our house had that on Tuesday. Then we got a notification on Friday that there was going to be an open house at our house on Sunday. And then we got a notification on Saturday that there was going to be an open house, or not an open house, a private showing on Sunday. And then we went to church and we put our house on the prayer request list. <laughs> we visited a new Sunday school class and um, we put our house on the prayer request list and told them the story of how we've been paying two mortgages. And when we got out of church, Brandon checked his phone and there was a notification that there was another showing and that one was from 7 to 8 p.m. So we figured they had to want in our house really, really badly for that to be the case. And we haven't got any feedback on it yet and typically if they're not interested, we get feedback either the same day or early the next day and we haven't gotten any yet. So we're hoping that it's still on their list of considerations and... Or maybe they are working on getting their stuff together to make a offer. That's what we're hoping. That's what we're hoping for. So keep praying for us. Keep praying for our house. And as usual, if you have any prayer requests, you know the three ways to do it. You can leave a message here below. You can find us at Gettin Gazelle on Facebook, or you can email us privately at gettinggazelle at gmail.com. Anything else? That's it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Labor Day, and we'll see you soon. Bye.